The title is, we were asked to talk about was supporting positive behaviour. The big takeaway message is, guess where they catch it? The kids catch it from us. And guys, from the husbands and partners, as well as the mothers and wives. I had the opportunity to do a presentation on positive behaviour because that's always an issue that comes up for parents. The key points for the session around give lots of positive attention. Yes, there are times when you do need to correct and do need to do other things, but if the ratio of positives to negatives is not the right ratio, you're starting to impact on your relationship with the child. So our touchstone is five to six positives for every one negative. So this is a fantastic reminder metaphor and picture for supporting positive behaviour. On this side of the pyramid, it talks about the things that we do as adults and parents in guiding our children in positive behaviour. On the other side of the pyramid, it reminds us of when we do these things, these are the things that we develop in our children. Really important to remember that it's a pyramid and pyramids are only as strong as the base of the pyramid. And right at the base, we've got the positive attention and doing things positively with our children that are the base. Get that base right in the pyramid and you probably won't have to go to the top of the pyramid pyramid so often, where we talk about consequences for challenging behaviour. There will be less challenging behaviour and less difficult behaviour to manage if you're doing the things at the base of the pyramid. So just moving up from the base of the pyramid, the second part is making sure that we're celebrating success with our kids for the little achievements that they do, and using praise and encouragement. Not saying that kids don't need limits, they do at times. But if you find that you're constantly um, providing negative consequences, then you need to think and come back to the base of the triangle. I am a panel member on the Supporting Positive Behaviours Workshop. There's a huge amount of issues that come with deaf kids with behaviour management and a lot of it is to do with communication levels. When children don't have the communication skills, they get very frustrated. They get quite angry and quite disruptive. And it's not that the child is bad, it's that they are finding things very, very hard. I think the thing we found with James especially was that he needed time without his implants on. He needed time that was just silent, that he could process his own thoughts because he would get very tired. Aided hearing is really exhausting. So we kind of needed to take his cues on that and say, you know what, he just needs quiet. He needs 10 minutes where he can just sit in his own head and play with his cars and just take a breath. And that helped to improve his behaviour and there are little tips that you learn. Having responsibilities <laughs> for each of your children, again, according to what they can and can't cope with, the responsibilities were great, you know, for us. Cameron was allowed to hold the list, James was allowed to find the pasta, Millie was allowed to, you know, pick up something little because she was the tiny one. Having those responsibilities, the kids just thought it was awesome. Positive behaviour, well-being for kids, well-being for families. I mean, it's like the home is where this occurs um, and that lays the foundation for future development. And we actually know that there's really strong link between well-being, positive behaviour, and educational achievement.